happening gang it's your boy retro back again with another reaction video yeah yeah uh today we're gonna be watching judge joe brown um breakdown is trump racist impeachment uh biden obama some guy named lolo seal toro not sure who that is bushes and the cia we about to get into some i don't even know i heard this one was wild somebody dropped this in the comment section uh below one of our last videos so had to check it out uh, make sure you guys keep that up man that really does help me out a lot um make sure you guys also like and subscribe and let's get straight into it yo what's up what what is your take on trump is trump a hold on this shit is loud too racist i don't think so all right actually it's pretty cool i think that's cool i have talked to a number of black entrepreneurs hold on he said he don't think so run it back my bad what what is your take on trump is Trump a racist? I don't think so. I have talked to a number of black entrepreneurs who back in the late 80s and 90s, were early 90s, were trying to get financing. They couldn't. Somebody told them to go check with Donald Trump. So they come back and tell me they got a loan from Donald Trump. He gave them a term loan. Show up with the interest in the principal, one check. But they had to go see him personally. They independently relate this tale that when they saw him, he said, this is what you're supposed to pay me? This our agreement? Said, yeah. And then tore the check up, shook their hands, and congratulations. Now run your business. And this was when? This was back in the 90s. No, nah, that's clear. See, most people don't even know this. He had a sister. He was, every time you saw him back in the 90s, fine Paper bag, brown, beautiful black model. Wait, he likes fine women. Wait, he was dating her. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Run that back, Mr. Brown. He he was dating. He said he had this. I thought he was talking about he had a sister. Like he Trump had a sister. No, he meant he was dating a sister, a black woman. And he said she was fine, paper brown bag. He described her just like an old school. That's <laughs> yo, what? Nah, he was playing people on the loans like that. Yo, I should have ran into Trump in the 90s, yo. I, psh, come on, let me give me a little, you know what I'm saying? Let me start the, let me start the hustle up. I just need a camera. You know, I can do the YouTube before YouTube was big. <laughs> I ain't sold him the dream. This was back in the 90s. <laughs> See, most people don't even know this. He had a sister. He was, every time you saw him back in the 90s, fine Paper bag, brown, beautiful black model. <laughs> he had to color all that. He likes fine women. He didn't have any problem with dating a black woman, walking her down red carpets. So, I mean, she says he's not a racist. He just doesn't like many people, black or white. And he appreciates people who do stuff within their lane. Uh, well, not stay in their lane, but where they choose to be. Now that that right there saying that he don't like many people, that's understandable. Like, you can definitely not be racist. You know what I'm saying? It, it, I mean, like, you, I don't think he's like actually racist because of that. Because you can, it's your, it's how you, you know, your opinion, how you feel, how you want to move and live your life. You don't have to like everyone. So like, if you have a small circle or a, a select few people that you know, what I'm saying, the types of people that you like, white or black, you know, what I'm saying, your race or not your race. I feel like if you hold, you, you say you don't like a, if I, like if I said I didn't like a white person because, you know what I'm saying, that's just that high, I didn't like them. I feel like that's on me, you know what I'm saying? I, it doesn't matter if they're white or black. I could say the same thing about a black person. I don't like them because they do that. If a white person or a black person does this, I don't like them, you know what I'm saying? I feel like that's how Trump operates. Definitely like business-like. He doesn't have the emotions in it. He doesn't like you for, you know, you're, you're bad with money, you know what I'm saying? Versus character flaws I mean not character flaws but like the color of your skin and shit like that B if they no do questions. it well he admires them black white brown red yellow most people don't know this he did was the finance man behind Jesse Jackson's two runs for president oh wow wow <laughs> See? so you know he talks but I don't mind somebody talking I think we've gotten in too sensitive to that. That's part of the effeminization of the country. I remember in junior high and high school, hey, man, I won't say nothing, man, but last night when I saw your mama, man, you don't know I was over there because you were asleep, man, but blah, 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 blah. We ran the dozens. That was our sport. 
Rare that does. So we were used to talking <laughs> about each other. Now, man, he talking about my mama, man. What's wrong with you? That's facts. Do, do you think uh, Trump will get reelected? I think he's going to get reelected. Uh, this impeachment mess we've got right now. There's a thing called the U.S. Constitution, and the Constitution says the president is the chief diplomatic officer of the United States. It puts no limits on his discretion. It simply says that if he comes up with any treaties, they have to be ratified by the Senate. If a treaty is ratified by the Senate, it becomes part of the supreme law of the land. The president and other elected and appointed officials are under oath required to follow the law of the land. The State Department, Secretary of State are part of his cabinet and are essentially advisors to the president. He's the boss. So what he does relative to Biden is simply what is allowed and mandated by the Constitution, specifically Article 1, Section 8 that says the president is charged with, quote, enforcing the law of nations. We have an Interpol treaty with various European states and also one specifically with the Ukraine that requires that we basically investigate, apprehend, prosecute, extradite criminal elements and criminality. Mm -hmm. So Biden out of his own mouth, and I've heard this tape twice, uh, January this year, he says, well, 19, 2019, he says, I guess I broke some laws, <laughs> extortion. I told the Ura uh, Ukrainians if they didn't get rid of this uh, the prosecutor prosecutor's name yeah, is Skoa, anti Skoa the I think. corruption prosecutor Yeah, he said Ukraine. if you don't get rid of him, we'd withhold $85 billion in loan guarantees. So his son, who had just been discharged for the military for being a junkie, uh, had a drug problem, Is that what had no history in business. He affiliates with this, and at the time, Biden was in charge of the U.S.'s Ukrainian posture and relations. Uh, Obama had assigned him that. And by implication, he brought Obama into committing a crime in office which is a felony, it's extortion. He committed one extortion by his own mouth, uh, threatening to withhold 85, million and, 85 billion, billion in loan yeah. guarantees if they didn't get rid of this prosecutor who was zeroing in on that corporation that his son had just been hired to represent after Biden Sr. had uh, been assigned by the president the task of dealing with Ukrainian diplomacy. So. Son gets $18.5 million out of it, and he has no background other than a dishonorable discharge from the armed services for drug abuse. But wow. one last question. Do you think black people are missing an opportunity with Trump? Yo, yeah. See, you've got somebody that is not a lifetime Republican. He's been a blue dog Democrat for most of his life. He usurped the Republican Party. So... I think this thing I've been tweeting about, no benefit, no vote, ought to be the deal. We haven't gotten a damn thing out of the Democratic Party for a long time. And the last one, number 44 and the one before that, 43, Bush and Obama, well, there are pictures of Bush with his arm around uh, eight-year-old Barack Obama because his stepdaddy, adopted daddy, Lolo Sotoro, Okay. had done a lifetime worth of business with the Bushes. Uh, wow. Uncle George Herbert Walker, after whom George Herbert Walker Bush, Bush one president, was named, founded Halliburton in 1946 in Oklahoma. And Lolo Sotoro had been international executive vice president for Standard Oil. There, there was talk of him being a CIA asset. Oh, well, yeah, Indonesia. see, he ran mm -hmm. the death squads for the Indonesian army. On mm -hmm. his own call, anyone could be assassinated. So when George Herbert Walker Bush became head of the CIA under the Ford administration, he just got with his old buddy in the oil business, Lolo Sotoro, and pulled off the hits. See, uh... Wait. That was Obama's stepdaddy. He was calling hits. I was wondering who. I was like, this is like I know all these names: Biden, Obama, 
the Bushes and the CIA, but then um, for them to say this Lolo Sinatra guy, I'm sitting there like, who is that? That's Obama's stepdad who was big wig in the international oil industry and also CIA, or I don't even know what CIA, like, asset? I don't even know what that means. Yo, drop that in the comment section below. Let me, if you guys got a video, informative, a pamphlet, anything, let me know what they talking about, man. What? Who, what, what was he? He was calling hits? No, Obama was only eight with, with the Bushes? Bro, I thought Barack Obama came out of nowhere, to be honest. Like, I didn't, I thought he was just like a politician, you know, and he just got really lucky and became the president, like, really put in the work. I didn't think his stepdad was like, you know, a big wig like that, but I mean, like, you gotta, you kind of got to figure that too, you know, if he ran for presidency, was in a, you know, a, a spot of Senate, I don't know. I just, I kind of wanted to, I wanted to root on the underdog story, but they also did say he was a wine and stuff like that. So the seal twirl thing, and I also didn't know he was adopted. I got to do my research on Obama. Holy. Look of him being a CIA asset. Oh, well, yeah, Indonesia. see, he ran mm -hmm. the death squads for the Indonesian army. On mm -hmm. his own call, anyone could be assassinated. So when George... Herbert Walker Bush became head of the CIA under the Ford administration. He just got with his old buddy in the oil business, Lolo Sotoro, and pulled off the hits. See, uh, Barack's grandmother has been acknowledged as being the woman that operated the channels through which CIA money went to the Southwest Pacific. So she introduced her daughter who had just had Barry, Barack, to Lolo Sotoro, and they got married, and Lolo Sotoro adopted Barack Obama. The name was changed to Barry Sotoro. Mm -hmm. Now, when he went to high school in Hawaii, I know about that high school. I almost sent my oldest son to it. I could afford it, but I didn't think he observed, deserved it. 20 years ago, <laughs> the tuition was $95,000 a year, not including room and board. When Obama went there, I've talked to two of his classmates. They independently state that the tuition, not including room and board, was 45000 okay. Now, Business Insider reports his income for 2017 at over $200 million net. That's after taxes, deductions, write-offs. Mm -hmm. For this last year, 2018, they reported it as $570-plus million dollars. And that's after all deductions, tax, right? Trump doesn't make that net. I mean, even some of the richest people in America don't make that. Why? Wait, is he saying that Barack is making this? That's what Barack's making? I want to know what he, what, what he got going on. Is he making that much? He, what, what's going on? Because when his stepdaddy died, he was one of the 10, 15 richest men on earth. And he left everything in a trust fund operated out of Indonesia oh. so the American government can't touch it ah. that makes Barack Obama one-third beneficiary for the assets of one of the 10, 15 richest men on earth. Wow. See, so we got a game run on us. Now that, he just answered it right there for me. I didn't know that. So Obama was a trust fund baby, you know what I'm saying? In a way, his stepdaddy left him a lot. He was the one of the top 10 richest men in the world. What? This is out of nowhere. So, you know that little thing that Bush W. does when he gets with Michelle, they giggle and he gives a candy. The inside thing, is that supposed to be the same kind of candy he used to give to her husband when he was six, seven, eight years old? Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, he, he just dropped a little, you know what I'm saying, a bombshell on us and left it. That's their inside joke. So Michelle's getting candies from Bush. That he used to give to Obama when he was a youngster, yo. There was so much like just you know broke down in this. Well, where's where's Joe Joe Brown? Judge Joe Brown getting all this from? This is crazy. I feel like he's been like just like a fly on the wall for all these situations where like he's just like that old head that you know everybody feels comfortable like you know dropping that that, that knowledge on or the information and telling them everything. He just is putting it all together for us. That's crazy. So the Obama family goes way back in wealth, and they mess with the Bushes heavily. Like his pe, like not even Brock. I mean, of course Brock directly, but like his parents, even his grandparents, were you know big wigs. That's that's nuts. Yo, make sure you guys keep dropping those recommendations in the comment section below. Just 
anything you guys feel like I should see or, you know, needs to be brought to my attention. Um, I'm actually making a list full of, you know, just different uh, stuff that we need to watch and uh, review or react to. So, also make sure you guys like this video, man. Subscribe to the channel. I'm going to roll to 10K, y'all. I'll catch y'all in the next week. Go.